In this presentation, we'll take a look at an alternative method to track restricted items or the detail for restricted items. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our not-for-profit company dashboard. We're going to go on down to the reports on the left-hand side. Opening up the reports, we want to open up then our profit and loss report. So we're going to be opening up the P&L profit and loss report. I'm going to close up the hamburger and consider our objective here. So our objective, note within the profit and loss, we currently have, if we select the dropdown, we could sort the profit and loss by classes. And if I run that report, and we're in the month of January, by the way, January 2020, if we run that report or for the year, there's nothing in there after January. So as long as you're picking up January, you, you should be okay. So if we run that report, we've got the detail for it in, in terms of the items that we put in place for restricted and unrestricted. Then within the unrestricted, we had the programs and the other admin admin information and whatnot. And that's going to be including the fundraising here. This is going to give us the total unrestricted. Now, note that we don't have an easy kind of filter right here that's going to be able to like collapse the columns, for example, for something like the unrestricted subcategories. What we do have are the filters up top. So if we go to the filters up top, uh, we, we can then do some some adjustments to these items. So we're going to customize up top. We can go down to the filter item. And I would want to then go to the classes. So we could filter by classes. And then we can uh, select the drop down. That's not the classes drop down. The classes drop down. And then we can pick, say, uh, we want restricted and unrestricted. Let's just pick restricted and unrestricted. And then I'm going to run that report. So then if we scroll back down, it still picks up the restricted and unrestricted. Then it picks up any ac activity that are in the subcategories of unrestricted. Now note that's not exactly what we'd like to see over here because if I went back to our report and uh, we were going to give this to, to our uh, board of directors, let's say for a not-for-profit, we would like to break it out by, between just we restricted and unrestricted with our two columns in a similar fashion as this uh, statement of activities. And typically our, our goal here is to give this to the board of directors in such a way that we can basically make it as simple as possible so that people can get right down to like decision making practices with people that may not be, you know, experts as financial statements. And even if they are like th these reports are more, uh, more detailed than, than normal financial statement reports because of these breakouts of restricted and unrestricted. Uh, and the requirements that are going to be there. So what we would like to do is kind of group this in a way that it's as easy to see as possible, then provide more detail if necessary. So what we would like to see is basically restricted and unrestricted. You'll note down here that it's broken out by function of the program rather than by nature in terms of the expenses. We'll talk more about this as we enter the expense information. Then we could further break down if questioned, we'd like to be able to say, okay, now if you want more detail, about about uh, these items, the subcategory restrictions and unrestrictions, we can provide that with something like this up top, giving you this is the expense breakout for the programs and uh, the general ledger and the and the fundraising information. So that's how that's how we'd kind of like to construct this. All this information is necessary. We're going to need this information for reporting purposes. It's possible to put this information, all this information together. But it would be an overwhelming report, right? And the more overwhelming the report, the, the more problematic it, it's going to be. Uh, well, if the, the harder it's going to be for decision making in a board of directors kind of room that's trying to get right down to the decision making process with a group of people, a group of people that might not be, you know, experts at reading not for profit financial statement reports. So then if we go into this item, so we have the restricted and we have the unrestricted here. And this is one format that we can break this out. Now, note, we can further group it together. If we were to export this, say, to Excel, then we can simply delete these two columns, right? I can export this to Excel and say, you know, this column, the total unrestricted is picking up these two columns. And I can pretty easily within Excel just simply delete these two columns and be able to, to generate a report that will look something uh, like, like this. But we can't do it exactly straight from the filtering options. Now, then what we did is we made another report that's going to be uh, breaking out further details on on uh, the restricted items to give us the detail of the restricted items. And we did that by making the, the sub customers and we can run that report. Let's go ahead and, and copy this tab up top. 
duplicate this tab, right click and duplicate it, go back to the tab to the left, open up the hamburger, go down to the reports again, and then if we open up another income statement, we're going to scroll down and open up another income statement or P&L report, profit and loss report. And the other method that uh, we used to break that information out is a, is a P&L report, selecting the drop down. And then if we were to go to seeing this by customer, then uh, run that report. So we're going to, I'm going to close up the hamburger and then run that report. So now we can break this out by, by the, the more detail, which is in the restricted item, which is restricted with regards to time. And again, we have this kind of broken out. The benefit of having these two, these two breakouts is then, then I can put this detail for the restricted items in kind of a different report. So we can do a different filtered report and have, have not as long a report in the profit and loss by class report. Uh, the other option we can have is, is to have these restricted items, these more items in the profit and loss by class report, and then simply use the filters to, to be filtering the reports out. And we can actually save and memorize filtered reports. So I'm going to do both methods. I'm going to add that over. I'm going to, I'm going to go and add the uh, classes for the categories of the, uh, of the restrictions into classes as well. So we've made subcategories of them, subcustomers for them. So we can track them on a different report and then I'm going to add classes for them. So to do this, I'm going to go to the first tab, right click on it. I'm going to duplicate this tab. Then I'm going to go back to the tab to the left and we're going to add classes again. So that means I'm going to go up to the cog up top. We're then going to go to the lists and let's take a look at all lists. So all lists and then we're going to go to the classes. So we're going to go back to the classes. This is going to give us our grouping of classes. So then I'm going to close the old hamburger up top so we can see our grouping. And we made these subgroupings under the unrestricted. We have no subgroups for the restricted. We're going to add the restricted group now, which is going to be a time restriction. So what I'm going to do is add another class. I'm going to say I want a new class. And then I'm going to call it a time restriction. So it's going to be time restriction. Let's just call it time here. And then I'm going to make it a subclass. It'll be under the subclass of restricted. So I'm going to put it under the subclass of restricted. And then we're going to say, okay. So we have a similar fashion as we had before where we had the unrestricted and then the subclass. Now we have the, the, the time as the subclass of the restricted items. So now I'm going to add that to our restricted items. I'm going to go back to the P and L profit and loss. And uh, we'll recall that this amount and the restricted item, it's under uh, pledge here. I'm going to, I'm going to click on that and then go into that report. So we're going to go into that and then I'm going to find it here. So there's going to be our invoice. This is the invoice. I'm going to go into that invoice that will take us back to the invoice. So I'm going back into the invoice and perhaps this is even easier to see on the, on the other report. Let's actually, close this off and do that again. I'm going to close this. And if I go to the P and L by class, the profit and loss by class, close up the hamburger. Then you'll see here, we've got uh, the restricted items. What I want to do is now further break out these restrictions to what they're restricted in, into the subcategory of restricted. And therefore we won't have anything in simply a restricted class. That's going to be the parent class, just like unrestricted will be. But then we're going to have the, the things, the categories of the restrictions. So then we're going to go into the 108. So there's our invoice once again. So if we go into that invoice, I'm going to go into the invoice then. And there's going to be our item. So there's going to be our invoice. And I'm going to hold down control, scroll down a bit. Remember, if you're above 100% of the zoom, it can do funny stuff sometimes. So you want to be back down to the normal uh, setting. And then down here, I want to add a class or change the class. It's currently in the restricted, the parent class. Now I'm going to select the drop down, and I want to put it into the, into the class of time, which is under the parent of restricted. Okay. And then we're going to save that. And then if we go back into our reports, then now let's go back into our reports. Let's close this out and let's go back to our reports. We've got to open up the hamburger to do that. Actually, I'm in a report right now, but let's go back into it this way in case I've confused anyone on where the report is. We'll go back into the report. We'll go into the P&L profit and loss report. And then I'm going to close up the hamburger, hold down control, scroll up a, a bit to that one, two, five. 
scroll back up I'm gonna bring this out and now show this by class let's bring this out by classes run that report and now you've got your information so we have the restricted item here and then we have and notice you can you can make these columns a little bit wider by doing this we have restricted and then we have the time and the total restriction so so now we've got got more information on this one report now again this this makes this report get a little bit muddy this is going to be a, a muddy report because now it's going to have you know a lot of detailed information in it but we can refine this report down by using the the filters to refine it down and we can actually save those reports with the filters in them if we so choose so we could say hey look this is the report for the detailed restricted items and possibly the the unrestricted items in other words we can make a report that that just has the the detailed information and we could further break it down by exporting it to excel where where we can easily delete all the columns except the total columns and uh, and and make simplify the report that way so the, the downside of doing this method, of course, is again that you're going to have a longer report that you'll have to sort, but you can make custom reports to make that sorting by, by filtering a, a little bit easier to, to do. And the other method you could use again is to have another report with, by using the subclasses, and we'll do both methods here, and, and the subclasses will then be running the customer to report, and you can run the customer's report here, and then you could break out the added items with by the sub customer now in the quickbooks desktop version there's there's different methods that uh, or there's different reports for jobs which makes the jobs tool to track the restricted items a, a little bit different a little bit easier in some ways because you'll note that uh, we'll have to track this more than a year more more than one year's worth of time so when we want to track a job uh, or a project or uh, restricted items for a long period of time we'll have to run the income statement back for for all time for the beginning of of the restricted items until the current date right to because it's going to be kind of like a if it's a contractor job it would be kind of like an open job that would always be open right? until until it had been you know unless it was a uh, fulfilled some types of restriction restricted items will always be open and so we're gonna have to run it not just for the current time period but for for the life of it to see to see basically all the activity that is going to be in it so we'll sh we'll see that a little bit more as we go on as we keep on uh, running these reports. So that's going to be the alternative method. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.